scared you, didn't I? <laughs> or perhaps I didn't. I don't know. I have an effect on people sometimes, especially when I look in the mirror. It's kind of crazy. So, hey, ghouls, I hope you're doing well, and welcome to another episode of Baron Van Goolstein's Movie Crypt. I am, of course, you're the Baron of Whore, your Baron, Baron Van Goolstein. Yay! And I'm here to introduce another classic Vincent Price film, The Last Man on Earth. Of course, The Last Man on Earth has uh, been known uh, to be remade a few times, once uh, by into the Omega Man, played by Charlton Heston, and of course, just recently, I Am Legend, with uh, Will Smith, uh, but the original Vincent Price version, uh, well, that, that uh, film altogether just uh, terrifying, because imagine, you're the last person on Earth, and all of a sudden, you have to chase vampires, you have to kill all these vampires or living dead creatures. Well, that's the basis of this story, because all of humanity has been infected and turned into the living dead. And it is up to the last man on Earth to become, reluctantly become a vampire hunter. Vincent Price stars in our feature right now, The Last Man on Earth. Hello, cameraman. Cameraman? Cameraman. Hello. Mr. Director. Are you, hey, where'd you go? Mr. Hey. Fractured! Fra anybody! I think I'm alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Hmm. Oh, oh, whew. There we go. Okay, last man on earth. Another day to live through. Better get started. inherited the world only three years. Seems like a hundred million.
Every day there are more of them. They live off the weak ones and leave them for the pit. KOKW calling. Come in. KOKW calling. I'm on international frequency. Come in. and reason's the only advantage I have over them. I've got to find where they hide during the day. Uncover every one of them. Now, where did I finish off yesterday? Madison Street to 31st Avenue. 11 kills. Over three years. And there's more than half the city I haven't searched.
Monica. That means one more stop I'll have to make. fresh, but I'll take only what I need. They've got to last. have to be replaced before dark.
How long will I have to keep up this search? Another day. Another day to start all over again.
birds. God, how I miss you. The sun's already set. They'll be everywhere. Ha 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 ha! 
It's highly theoretical, Ben. Theoretical? Do I have to remind you that theory is the beginning of solution? Is Europe's disease carried on the wind? Is it, Ben? Could be. And if it is? It isn't, Verge. Is that what you really think, or just what you'd like to think? I, I cannot accept half-baked theories that sell newspapers. I'm, I'm a scientist, not an alarmist. You're whistling past the graveyard. Is that a commentary on my work at the lab? We both know how hard you've worked. I'm sorry, Ben. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. Uncle Ben, you brought yourself cartridge. All right, Kathy. Who can resist that face? <laughs> All right. Card tricks. Card tricks. Robert, is it possible this germ or virus could be airborne? Anything is possible, Verge. The best brains in the world have been running through this thing with a fine-tooth comb. The germ is visible under a microscope, but it's not like any bacilli I ever known. In what way? It can't be destroyed by any process we've been able to uncover. But with the whole world trying, there must be a solution. Hey, Mommy! Hey, Mommy. We need you to cut the cake! <laughs> right now, our problem is to cut that cake.
the wind wake you up? It always does. How do you feel? I'm all right. Oh, don't get up, honey. I'm not sick, Bob. I'll make you You don't okay. have to. I'll be all right. Go on and read your paper. All right. Oh, sweetheart, look, if you don't feel well, please go back to bed. I'm just a little tired, that's all. I wish somebody would find a vaccine. It's all we're working on at the lab, Birch. Maybe you better not send her to school today. All right. You... You think you should go to work? I have to. Oh, Bob. Bob. I'm so... Frightened. Everything's going to be all right, sweetheart. Kicks the bone marrow theory in the head. This specimen shows a higher white count than when I put it on the slide. Those cells are still living, Dr. Mercer, off one another. There has to be an answer. You heard that all communications are ended outside the continental limits? Yes, I heard. That leaves it in our laps. So we keep trying. Where's Cortman? Well, he should be here by now. You two stay on this virus theory until I decide it's exhausted. Right. Yes, sir. Morgan will fill you in. All right, sir. And what did the great man of science have to say today? More of the usual? Oh, he's trying, Ben, just like the rest of it. And nothing works. The streets are swarming with truckloads of bodies that they're throwing into that god-awful pit. And the dedicated Dr. Mercer goes on with his plodding, unimaginative approach. You have a better idea? Maybe. At least it involves imagination. Ben, it's as simple as this. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportion. And you don't believe some of the dead have come back? Now let's get to work. And why are they burning the bodies? Why don't they bury them? Because it's the best known way to control the contagion, to keep the germ from spreading. That's what we've always believed at any rate. You'd prefer us to believe in vampires? If they exist, yes. There are stories being told, Bob. By people who are out of their minds with fear. Maybe. But there are too many to be just coincidental. Stories about people who have died and, and have come back. They're stories, Ben, stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? Come here. Look. I know it's look. Now, is this the still or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? To show me germs is not to refute these stories, Bob. Point is, if there are vampires, they exist in spite of these germs. Come on, let's get to work. And until further notice, this station will continue its around-the-clock coverage of this national disaster. And now, 
we switch you to the state capitol where His Excellency, the Governor, is speaking from the Executive Mansion. Further, I have, in conjunction with the federal government, declared this state to be a disaster area. The public health is dependent on bodies of the deceased being burned. You must notify the health department immediately if you have a plague victim in your home. Under no circumstances should you gather public. If you're the dire emergency that exists, I intend to... Anything new? Huh? No, nothing new. Nothing. Mommy, where are you? Mommy, I can't see. I said no. Verge, there's nothing they can do. Oh, we can't just let her lie there. Well, this way she has a chance. If you call a doctor, he'll report it. Do you want that? Can you be so sure she... Blindness is one of the symptoms. You're not to call a doctor under any circumstances. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy, where are you? I've got to pick Ben Cortman up on the way to the... the lab. No one is to come into this house. <laughs> Now remember that. Me, Ben. We're late. Ben, what's the matter with you? Nothing, and I'm going to keep it that way. Ben, look, let's talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. You think I'm out of my mind. You laughed at me in my theory. You might be one of them. Ben, look, you're ill. You ought to see a doctor. No doctors. You take care of your life, I'll take care of mine. Now get away from here. You understand? Get away from here! Hey there, ghouls. I hope you're enjoying the film, The Last Man on Earth. I know I am. I've been dying to see this movie for a long time, and uh, I am I am sadly to admit that this is the first time that I've seen the film. You can probably tell that, huh? So, continue to enjoy the film, but first, uh, one of the questions that I get sometimes is, Baron, what is that stuff on your shelf? You know, that's uh, these little items right here, and, uh, and I'm going to share them with you right now. Uh, first, of course, we have my... Uh, Trusty phone, uh, which is uh, used to communicate. Stand by to receive our transmission. Uh, 
what a cell phone is. Uh, the deal with this cell phone is, of course, I've never had much luck with it. It usually ends in some type of uh, turmoil here for yours truly or uh, some of the people that show up here, if you get my meaning, Bab. So, um, of course, sometimes I have guests here at the crypt, and uh, one of my guests is Zombie, who, if you don't know who Zombie is, you can see him. He has a cameo in one of the films I did called Chasing Wise Men. I'm sure he'll stop by here at the crypt sometime so you can meet, you know, you can meet. But uh, I always try to keep a nice fresh supply of uh, brains, uh, just in case he stops by. It's his favorite trait. You always want to make sure you have some type of uh, snack for your guests when they arrive. And, uh, of course, any true fan of Batman and Gurstein's movie crypt will recognize this item. It is the, uh, Good Night of the Living Bed bottle that was presented, uh, during the pilot episode, the very first episode of, uh, Baron's movie crypt where we did Night of the Living Dead. Uh, it's Good Night of the Living Bed. So, a medicine is supposed to help, uh, deter you from, uh, nightmares with some, uh, very interesting <laughs> and, uh, weird side effects. Check out the, uh, movie Night of Living Dead on the, uh, the channel here. And this, this is one of my favorite set pieces right here. It is a board game that I talked about early on in my blogs when my website first showed up. It's called Shrieks and Creaks, and I don't know how well it shows up here on the camera, but uh, you can see that there's a picture of a cassette tape right here. That being said, uh, Shrieks and Creaks was a game where you would walk around a uh, haunted mansion trying to get out and uh, helping you along, or sometimes not so helping you along, was this talking tombstone uh, that was plugged into a cassette player that uh, the tape would play as you're playing, and you would use a host key to make the uh, talking tombstone talk, and it would tell you to where to go in the house. And uh, sometimes it would send you all the way back to the start. But uh, this little game right here, though, I uh, used to play it all the time when I was a young kid, a uh, young baron. And uh, it's still one of my favorite games. Sometimes I'll take it off the shelf here and play it. Get those wonderful uh, toys. Let's play it right here. Uh, you can share the. Ho you can see that the host and I we kind of share a little flair here for uh, the uh, same kind of dress almost. So, and of course, everybody would uh, recognize this little setup as our uh, our homage to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Of course, it's Freddy's glove coming through the wall. And uh, so there you go, items that you can find here on the web crypt. Uh, you, if you're interested in uh, sending some items, by all means, uh, go ahead and message me, let me know, I'll tell you how you can send items. Uh, we'll post them right here on the crypt, if you have pictures, uh, drawings or something, we can go ahead and post those on the wall as well. We'll even feature them right here. So, And uh, just, just to prove to you, you know, that there are people who do uh, artwork and post them uh, on our Facebook page or the website. Uh, Mr. Our, one of our number one friends, Michael Fitzgerald, look at some of this work that he did here uh, with me uh, implanted into uh, one of the, uh, looks like the Grindhouse posters. I thought that was really cool there. Um, so, uh, look at that. That's that pretty cool. And of course, I have a special uh, little uh, art piece that he did uh, for the website. Caution! Veterans Web Crypter. There we go. Yes, there it is right there. So also very very cool looking so um, all this great artwork done by a fan so by all means if you have some send it our way we'll go ahead we'll show it right here on the show we'll put it on the website and uh, with that being said ghouls go ahead and enjoy the conclusion of The Last Man on Earth starring Vincent Price. If you're looking for anybody but me, forget it.
Are they all gone? That's right. Is there any hope from the latest report? No, not yet. But believe me, Morgan, we'll find an answer. When, doctor? We need it right now. I need it. You're the only one who wasn't afraid to come here today. What's going to happen, Dr. Mercer? Is everybody in the world going to die before someone finds the answer? No, I don't think so. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on, but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. I told you not to call anyone. Mom, she was blind. She couldn't see. She kept reaching out her hands, groping through me. And then, all of a sudden, she was gone. And they came and I tried to stop them. They took her. I saw a truck out there. Was that it? Was it? I'm sorry, lady, there's nothing I can do. Let that truck through. Get out of the way. Get back, folks.
No. I won't let them put you there, Virch. I promise. I won't let them put you there. Who's there?
if Cortman thinks he can get to me by destroying my car, his wits are getting dull. This convertible would be nice. Probably handles well. But I can't think of comfort. There was a time when I shopped for a car. Now I'm looking for a hearse. This station wagon will have to do. Every street, every house, every alley, every inch of this town, I've got to find it. Where are they hiding? Answer me. This is KOKW calling. KOKW calling. Answer me. Now we 
we've got you all cleaned up. Hmm? <laughs> You're going to feel better. I'm going to put you down here now, and you can rest. Hmm? Get you all cleaned up. You know they're out there, don't you? You poor, driven thing. Everything's going to be all right. Nobody's going to hurt you. Everything's going to be all right. All right. You're going to get better. We're going to have lots of happy times together. You'll see, everything's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you, can't you understand? Wait! If I was one of them, you know that they can't come out until sundown. Do you want to come with me or do you want to face them? Feeling better? Yes. 
Would you like a cup of coffee? Thank you. You seem very well organized here. Yeah. My name is Ruth Collins. I was married. I lost my husband. You are alone. You were married. Yes. Children. My daughter. What are you doing? Why do you turn Please. away? Please. Why do you turn away? <laughs> your mind just because I... You can't change the facts by talking. Facts? What facts? That I got sick? I've had a sensitive stomach all my life. I saw my husband killed, torn to pieces right in front of our house. I've been wandering ever since, hiding at night, not eating more than scraps, sick with mourning, sick with fear, unable to sleep. And you shout at me. You chased me across the field, hit me, drag me to this house. And to top it all, when I get sick because you shove a piece of reeking garlic in my face, you tell me I'm infected. Where are Let you going? Go. You can't go out there. It's almost sunset. Let me go. You can't I go can't. out there. Now in a few minutes, care. the streets will be full Let up. Let me go. And please, I don't care. let me give you a blood test. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You must be hungry. I'll fix you some dinner. You seem used to them. Oh, as much as anybody could be. I'm not frightened of them anymore, if that's what you mean. Oh, I protect myself against them, but only because there's so many. Individually, they're weak, mentally incompetent, like animals after a long famine. If they weren't, they surely would have found a way of breaking in here a long time ago. Come out, Morgan! Hear that? That's Ben Cortman. He was my friend. Your friend? He was like a kid brother. If I could find him and destroy him, but you said he was your friend. When I find him, I'll drive a stake through him, just like all the others. But you lived... But you lived through all this. Do you know why? Perhaps I was chosen. Hmm. That's a laugh. Or perhaps it's because a long time ago, when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my sleep by a bat. My theory is that the... 
The bat had previously acquired the vampire germ. By the time it entered my blood, it had been strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have immunity. Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. You don't think that I'm immune, do you? It's a simple matter to find out whether you are or not. What will you do if I am infected? Cure me? You don't have to answer. I know as well as you do. It's incurable. There might be a way. If not of killing the germ, at least of containing it, keeping it from spreading. If I had the equipment, the time. But you don't. I'll be one again. What do you mean? You found a solution? That's right. Exactly as you said it could be. I take that for it. What is it? Desubrinated blood plus vaccine. The blood feeds the germ. The vaccine keeps it isolated and prevents it from multiplying. We've had it for some time now. We? We? There are quite a number of us. And I thought you were alone. I was going to cure you. Does that amuse you? No. Now, I want the truth. I want all of it. Why are you here? To find out if you know any more than we do. You know, far less. We're alive. Infected, yes, but alive. We're going to reorganize society. Do away with all those wretched creatures who are neither alive nor dead. Start everything all over again. And you want me to join? You can't join us. You're a monster to them. Why do you think I ran when I saw you? Even though I was assigned to spy on you, because I was so terrified of what I'd heard about you. You're a legend in the city, moving by day instead of night, leaving as evidence of your existence bloodless corpses. Many of the people you destroyed were still alive. Many of them were loved ones of the people in my group. I didn't know. Is there any way you can get out of here? What do you mean? They're coming after you tonight. That's why I was sent here, to prevent you from resisting them. I'm supposed to keep you here until they come. To kill me? Yes. Your new society sounds charming. The beginning of any society is never charming or gentle. And you pretended to be shocked at my violence. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you go on and use it? Get it over with. Use it. Get it over with. <laughs> now you know. What are you going to do?
What are you doing? It's already done. What? Look. Look! You see? It worked, Ruth. The antibodies in my blood worked. My blood has saved you, Ruth. Do you know what this means? You and I can save all the others. We won't be alone. We'll never be alone again. You are sure? Wait. Don't be afraid. Get out of here. Tell them not a threat to us. You can't go out there. You wouldn't get us. ten feet. When they come here, there won't be time for questions and answers. They'll come to kill. For God's sake, Robert, let me go. Oh, Robert, please. Ruth, look. Tomorrow. Please. Oh, Robert. Tomorrow, Ruth. Tomorrow will no. be all right. Robert, no. Detected under the microscope. Wait, I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. I'll check it again. Oh, <laughs> 
course, it's because a long time ago when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my <laughs> by a bat. My theory is that the, the bat had previously acquired the vampire germ by the time it entered my <laughs> strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have <laughs> Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. Come here. Look. I know it's not. Now, is this bacilli or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? KOKW calling. Come in. Shake, 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 Sinora. Shake your body liner. K-O-K-W calling. I'm on international frequency. Come in. I've got to keep control. All right, that goes well. I hope you enjoyed The Last Man on Earth starring Vincent Price. Uh, and of course, if you think about it, well, minus the vampire, or even with the vampires, but take the vampires out. Imagine that you're the last person on Earth. There is no moving vehicles, there's no electricity, all uh, the trees and everything are growing out of control. What would you do? Well, see, put yourself in the place of Vincent Price here, and uh, maybe, uh, you know, why rewatch this movie and be a little bit more scary, I bet. So, I know I was scared at the beginning of the show, I thought I was all alone. But luckily I had all of you ghouls here watching, and uh, so I know as long as you're still watching, I'm not alone. So, make sure tonight you sleep tight, and knowing that you're there all every week, I'm going to be able to sleep tight. So, stay cool, ghouls.